Hey there guys, what's going on? Uh, I'm coming at you today with another Star Trek Online video. Um, I've actually been asked to, actually it's actually a request video as well actually. I will put that out there. Um, I've actually been asked to do this video uh, to be a guide for the R&D project um, and uh, how to gain more Dilithium. Um, which both are pretty easy. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty easy to do so I will go through it all. Now, so, if I start off with the R&D section, you can just pop down to your duty officers right here, and come down to your research and development. Uh, as you see, you'll have these slots primarily unlocked. Like, I believe actually you unlock them as you go on, actually. It's been so long since I've, uh, so long since I've actually been a lower rank, I'm afraid. It's a little bit difficult for me to remember. Um, and then you'll have this one, normally have this one right at the bottom, which obviously you can see, purchase this slot from your fleet research lab, which I just, uh, getting over there, it's just, it's, it's one of the things I just can't be bothered to do it. Okay, so, if you have a look at them, if you haven't started these yet, these should all be at their lowest tiers, which, if you have a look at the you know, modules, is zero. Um, but every single one of them, should be on their lowest special projects of the training shield, science, projectiles, kits and modules, ground weapons, engineering, cannons, and of course, beams, which, fantastic. So if I take you all in there and I can show you what's going on. So with beams, as you can see, I am level 16 on it. I don't spend too much time actually progressing these. I've got to level 15 and that's kind of uh, as far as I wanted to get, to be honest. Um, because obviously I can make... Uh, all of this that you've got going on there. So, when you start, you're not going to be able to make some of these, uh, especially all these upgrades, um, and you also won't be able to make the omnidirectional beams that are up here, at the top, uh, because they are a level 15 plus. So, basically, all you're going to be doing with these is pretty simple. If I do these batteries, you can quite easily just make things with them, or better yet, if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see this research project. Which, if you were to go into it, hit next, you are going to need the duty officers to do so. And you can also only do it a set amount of times as well. A little bit of an absolute bummer. But it does happen, unfortunately. Um, so what you do, select your character. If you've got any catalysts, you may have opened some boxes, I don't know. If you have any catalysts, you can slip them on there and it will increase your chances. As you can see on this, it's already 100% anyway, so that's going to be a complete waste if I did that. Um, but basically, obviously, the duration of them is 20 hours, so once a day, you can create these. You will need the required costs, which is normally something very low. It's not really anything that you actually need to worry about whatsoever. Um... So by doing these costs, obviously, it you, means you're going to need the materials to make everything on here. Uh, some of these things can be created. So this is actually one material, as you can see. You need, so the more you make, obviously, the more you're going to need. But you're going to need dilithium and other components, uh, which will actually all go together towards making stuff like your dual beam banks, uh, your consoles, yeah, and your, your beams and your omnis, which is absolutely fantastic. So I suppose that's always a good idea. Uh, so the materials that you're going to need, you can actually find on your inventory. Ignore my assets. I'm a very poor man at the moment. Uh, spent everything. Uh, so you have a research and development slot, which is basically all your materials that you're actually going to find on here. Um, as you can see, I've actually got a absolute truckload of materials. Um, which is quite handy, especially if I want to create anything or do any research, because I will have them already there. Uh, as you can see, I've got all that. So, I, I don't ever really run out at all, but you can collect these in all sorts of things. So, doing like D-Space Encounters, you will have to pick up some uh, for completing them. Uh, PVE missions, uh, you do them, you'll get a little, little R&D box at the end. The higher PVE you do, the bigger the reward. Um, you can buy them from packs off the exchange, you can get them from packs from the actual sea store themselves. Um, best time to get them if you are getting them off the sea store is actually when there's a weekend event going on because you're going to benefit a lot more from it. 
than just doing this. Um, like some of the R&D weekends, if you unlock a box, it then gives you another box, which is fantastic, because that's what you want, really. Um, so we have all of that right there. So you need all these materials, and basically grinding is key. You are going to need to grind them. You can buy all these components off of the exchange as well. So if you have a little bit of energy credits, then you can actually make uh, make a little deal with somebody on the exchange. Just go and buy their stuff that they put up for sale. Some people actually put them up for ridiculous prices when they don't actually need to go up that high. Um, but basically, the research and development slots can help you out quite a bit, especially if you're looking for specific weapons as well, such as if you're looking for weapons which have uh, penetration ability, you can only craft them. You can't win them out of a pack, anything like that. So you're going to actually have to go through all of this and actually get it up to the required level just so you can actually create them. Um, I, kind of, I kind of don't want to spend a lot of dilithium fixing this. So obviously go in there. Again, I'm already at 100% very rare so it's not really going to be any benefit to me actually adding these. But it's on there now and I'm not going to take it off. Um, I mean, this is only level 2, uh, only level 2 beam array, so it's not actually going to be that difficult for me to create. I've got quite a few uh, of what is required, and if I need more, I'll just go and make more. So, obviously, if you don't know if it's a little bit red, a uh, little bit, uh, or the costs are actually greyed out, obviously that means you don't have the materials. Um, pretty easy to find out what they are. You can hover over them, and that will usually tell them. But, obviously, create the project. You cycle back over using the bumpers or whatever whatever your cost are for. You will have it there. You will notice on the side you can spend so much dilithium to actually finish the project early. Um, see, the higher level the project as well, the longer it's going to take. Mainly because obviously it's a higher quality, they need more time to work on it, which is absolutely fine. But if I quickly do that now, as you can see, what's been created is I have an anti proton beam or a Mark II with the ability of accuracy, critical hit, and overcharge. Um, all of which can be seen just on the right hand side there. Uh, which in itself isn't too bad, so obviously if that was Mark 14 that wouldn't be a too bad one. However, I would require a little bit more damage on there as a set of bonus. Um, but if I go back into these obviously beams, like I said, you've got all your beam weapons that you can make here. Um, you've also got your consoles, which is if you have a look at them, you have all these consoles just coming down here. Uh, which will benefit uh, your beam builds uh, and also all of these other than the second one down the, the directed energy distribution manifold all of them will also benefit if you want to use cannons okay so they will 100% benefit on them as well because what these other consoles do is they actually benefit the energy type rather than the type of weapon which is what the directed energy distribution manifold actually does um, so obviously the higher that these are created, the better they're going to be. Um, you don't want to worry too much about absolutely spamming them like crazy to upgrade them uh, the, the higher up you go. Mainly because every time you, you go into an encounter, you have a good chance of getting a higher ability ones, which they do drop at Mark 12, but they won't drop any higher than that. Um, so you do have that good chance there. The, obviously the major benefit of creating things in the R&D so you can get special abilities on certain things. Um, unfortunately with these consoles you won't be getting that special ability because there is nothing there. Um, by the end of a Mark 14 you usually get 39.7% energy boost which does stack so the more you have the higher it gets. Um, so they're the consoles that you can actually create through these. Um, you will notice to begin with you will have things uh, if I can find them You'll have normal batteries that you can create, I believe it's on the engineering. Yeah, you can see you've got some batteries there. Uh, we're going from there, we'll go in that into a minute. Um, however, you will be able to, the higher levels you get on this, on each section, to create different types of batteries for each thing, such as I can create an energy amplifier battery uh, for my weapons, which is really good, especially if you want to be creating... Uh, quite a nice little damage input, because they have quite a nice little ability. I don't think I have any on me. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, I actually do. There we go. As you can see, they're plus 20% bonus energy weapon damage for 20 seconds. Um, they've got a very low 
uh, recharge time. So they work really well actually, especially if you want to push that, that extra bit of damage out there. They're quite a nice little thing to have. Let's take you back on there. So your cannons. Again, you're going to have these consoles, which is, as you can see, which is why I said that these consoles actually benefit the energy damage rather than the actual type of weapon. Other than, again on this, the pre-fired chamber, which is just for the cannons. Which, in my opinion, and quite a lot of most, most people's, is a complete waste of time. What's the point? There is absolutely no point in creating them. Um, so you can create all these types of cannons here. You've got stuff like your dual cannons, your dual heavy cannons, single cannons, turrets. Your turrets are like your omnidirectional beams for uh, while well, on the beams. Um, however, they don't really pack too much of a punch, but they do have that 360 degree targeting arc. And you can slap, actually slap as many of them on there as you want, but that's going to be a pretty waste if you do. And depending on the type of ship as well, usually for cannons, I'd only ever recommend using cannons on escorts which are your tactical ships. Problem with the cannons is the damage output for stuff like cruisers, they're just a bit too slow really to, to actually maximize the amount of damage out of it. Um, so by create, creating all of these, if you want to create these cannons, um, if you've got an escort, go for the dual heavies because it's quick enough to spin around and you that will benefit you a lot more. Um, but like I said, you can create, again, same with the beams, you create different abilities going through them. You may have to spam them in creating them quite a bit because some of the abilities such as penetration, uh, shield penetration is actually quite difficult to get hold of unfortunately. But that is how they keep you going really isn't it? Let's face it, that's what they want from you. Um, with the with the cannons obviously you've got more here, you've got your bat battery targeting lock um, which you know, still isn't bad. Still isn't bad. So again, you've got all your all your bits that you can actually create. Each one is going to actually need different things. The main thing between the cannons and the beams is there are some things like the focusing lens, which will be identical, just because it's a weapon. It is an energy weapon. You you kind of need that focusing lens there to power it up. Um, but there are certain things like the plasma compensator or compressor. Sorry, not compressor. Uh, you're going to need on there. Um, again, you can actually see I'm only level 11 on this one, but again, because I really just couldn't be bothered, I created the weapons I needed, and then just, that's it, I stopped. Um, so, if you have a look at your engineering, your engineering has a little bit more in-depth, mainly because you've got consoles, you've got ground armor, impulse engines, warp cores, including both the singularity cores and the standard warp cores, you've got batteries, uh, a few, quite a few more batteries, of course you've got all your materials that you can create down here as well, plus your upgrades. And again, right at the bottom, you have got your research project as well, which I would recommend doing, if you have the patience, would recommend doing all the way up past level 15, because that's going to benefit you a lot more. Plus there are certain things you can actually create, which again, you can't under level 15. Uh, if I take you out to start with the consoles that we have here, you have a huge array of consoles. Now, they have, do have, most of them, completely different abilities to everything else. Uh, stuff like your ablative whole armor actually benefits when the earth comes up. Um, if we just have, we'll just go by the mad standard Mark IIs here, because I'm not going to cycle down to the Mark XIIs. No point. So you'll have point 11, uh, plus 11.3 uh, damage resistance to the ones that are marked down below there. Uh, for your uh, your your booster, what you like here, it will give you the plus three auxiliary power settings, which is good for ships which require uh, a boost in auxiliary power, such as science vessels, mainly because they need that auxiliary power to actually create exotic damage, everything like that. Um, there are certain consoles which actually need, which will give you a higher boost, the higher auxiliary power you have as well. Um, so they're another one to actually look out for. Um, again, this is another uh, damage resistance. However, it only does two types of damage resistance on this. But they are actually of a higher amount as well. Um, I'm going to be honest, I use a mixture of all of them. Um, and actually quite a lot of the time there is one console which I actually use most of the time called Bounty Hunter's Friend. Because it gives a good 37% 37, uh, 37 in damage resistance or plus 37 I can't remember it's one of those um, but I do have all of these um, so if you're not in a fleet and you are just starting up these are a good thing to equip into your engineering slots mainly because obviously they are going to give you that boost right there 
Uh, you have stuff like an EPS flow regulator. That is absolutely fantastic for most ships, um, but primarily also extremely good for escorts. So if you're looking to create a bit more uh, punch in your escort, you can actually equip one of these. Was it actually the little the little uh, powers that you see down on the left hand side here? You've got the weapons, shields, engines, and auxiliary. Um, just on my left hand side there. Obviously, mine have I have 125 out of 100. That will actually, if you see there, it cycles down. But adding those flow regulators will actually speed up that change of the cycle as well. I'm going to put that back there because I'll forget about it and uh, it'll just be, yeah. Um, let's go back on. Engineering. Where did I get to? Uh, yeah, it was the EPS flow regulator. Uh, so we have the field emitter here, a field emitter, I will get my words out very shortly, giving a plus three shield power setting. Obviously you can get a lot more, a lot, lot better consoles, however on these, it's just you're just creating what's on here to be honest. Um, but there are absolutely fantastic, so rank it all the way up to level 15, you'll actually be able to create a lot better consoles. Uh, you have the injector assembly, which gives... Come on, there you go, plus three engine power setting. So again, that will increase the power setting on the left-hand side of your screen by three. It isn't a lot, really, but again, this is only level two, so, you know, you can't expect much. Uh, there we go. Monotanium alloy. Uh, giving, again, only two resistance ratings, but it's actually physical damage and kinetic damage, which, yes, are completely two different things in this game. Um, but I can go later on I, in another video. I can actually go straight into the into talk about that. So I'm not actually going to waste the time because this is primarily about the R and D and dilithium. Uh, this video. So next one, you've got the neutral neutrolium alloy. Um, that's not actually a bad one. It does an all an all damage resistance. So on this one, you've got a plus seven point five, which is the lowest one yet. However, it does do all of it. So, going on to the next one, uh, bup, 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 bup. again, obviously, when you mark it, rank them up to level, uh, level 14 epic, um, obviously, the the uh, the amount of damage resistance you're actually getting on there is going to be a lot higher. Um, on this one, it just focuses on proton and anti-proton, um, which, if you do plan on ever doing PvP, um, a lot of people actually use anti-proton, so having a good uh, resistance on anti-proton actually wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but you can find better consoles for that, I'm afraid. Uh, right, so next one, you have the plasma distribution manifold. In your own time, dear. There we go, plus three weapon power settings. So again, that would increase your weapon power on the left-hand side of your screen, which is more beneficial for those who have a more tactical build. Uh, you have the RCS Accelerator, so you can actually, as you level these up, actually get better versions of these, which ha will, ha will have other effects on it, but they primarily, at a low level, will actually focus on your flight turn rate, so the, um, the speed on which your ship turns around in, it'll help speed them up, so if you are using a Dreadnought, and you actually have never heard of these, level it up, you can actually buy them off of the exchange with extra abilities on them, you can get fleet versions, um, Obviously, the fleet versions are a lot better. Um, and they'll actually speed up the turn rate of your console. It's not going to do it. You're not going to You're not gonna just tap the stick and you're going to 180 it instantly. It's not going to do that, I'm afraid. Um, but it will help uh, speed up that turn rate. So that's, you know, it's not a bad little console, to be honest. Okay, so you have your SIF generator here, which will give your uh, point... Plus 11.3 Starship Hull Restoration, which obviously improves the the whole healing, as you can see there. So that will help with obviously the damage uh, regeneration in a way. Um, actually, there's two different there are two different things, but well, again, I will get more into that at a different point. There you go. You've got the subsystem redundancies plus 17.5 resistance rating versus duration of subsystems that are offline. So your subsystems. That was actually the word I was looking for earlier on, with your power, just your powers down at the bottom left of the screen, your subsystems. Thank you very much, game. Um, that's actually down there at the moment, so a different one, different abilities on these will actually affect uh, the strength of this console, so obviously being offline will actually give you that little bit of a boost there. Um, okay, and go on to the last one of the engineering. So you'll have a plus 
11.3 on all of those damage resistance as well. It's pretty similar to the first one, however, the energy resist the energy damage uh, resistances are, are different, unfortunately. Um, right, so that's the engineering. Obviously, you can create all your armors here as well. They all have all your different abilities here. I'm not going to read them all out. I'm actually just going to select them. And unfortunately, I'm going to if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to have to let your pause it and have a good read if you are interested obviously this game the stronger you get uh the more uh, the stronger or oh, the stronger you get the more leveled up you are the better the equipment you're gonna be able to make um oh i just clicked that one my bad um so again they all have different uh, different effects on them depending on how you want to play your game as well so that's always a plus side of what you get and again there are a lot better ones that you can get from fleets etc etc however if you again if you are watching this and you are a beginner these are going to help you out that help you out a lot more rather than the fleet ones because fleet ones you actually have to work for quite a bit uh so you have in impulse engines here there is a another set that you can make but there's a whole lot of story on how to make the Aegis set, and I'm not going to go into the Aegis set right now. Um, so your your basic ones you're going to have, you're going to have your balanced impulse engines, your combat impulse engines, and your hyper impulse engines, uh, all having their own little different effects here. Obviously, your combat engines will actually perform better in combat situations um, than what your height like your hyper impulse engines will. So your balance obviously have a good balance between the speed and the turn rates, etc., etc. Whilst your hyper impulse engines focus primarily, supposed to be more on the speed. Um, and then your combats will actually focus on, you know, the speed and the combats. They actually do pretty well, actually, your combats. So they're actually a pretty nice little one to go on. You have all your warp cores here as well. Um, <laughs> depending on what you want from your ship, it's very difficult for me to say which one you actually want to go for. Um, you are going to have to read through them all, I'm afraid. Um, just to find out what you want. Uh, if you're a science vessel and you're looking for energy drain, you know, there are set ones you do really need to go for I'm afraid so again I'm, I'm not going to go through them all just mainly because it's going to be a big waste of your time unfortunately I, I'm not going to waste your time um, go back on there again you can find all the batteries you've got the whole patch there which I do use the whole patch um, and that does increase uh, you know, your whole hit points so that's pretty nice you've got your ground weapons there you can create all sorts of lovely delicious weapons going along here obviously you level them up to mark 14 epic and that'll be absolutely fantastic again as you notice they do use the materials there so once again if you if you weren't watching from the beginning you will need to create these these uh, components here out of materials that you find throughout the game from PVEs to Deep Space Encounters. You can even find abandoned ships or nebulas just in the, in the um, in the sector zones, uh, which help out quite a bit. So your kits and modules will give you obviously your kits and modules, which will help out your ground-based character. So it's not going to help out your ship whatsoever. Your projectiles do your mine launchers, coming with your torpedo launchers as well. You have also got consoles here for the torpedoes as well. They are pretty much like the energy beam uh, consoles that I have shown you right at the beginning of the video. However, they do focus on stuff like uh, your quantum torpedoes, your transphasic torpedoes, photons, croton, everything you actually see here, to be honest. Um, so they will actually focus on all of them, I believe. Again, you do have one on here. There it is. That This one actually goes for all your, tor all your mines, not your torpedoes. I'm pretty tongue-tied today. It's quite, it's quite annoying, actually. There's your torpedo one. Um, so this will benefit all your torpedo weapon damage, whilst the others will go for your uh, torpedo types. If you have a look on there, you've got your chroniton, photon, uh, plasma, quantum, transphasic, and tricobalt. I don't like tricobalt, actually. Yeah, they're, they're my least favourite. I think I've used them about once or twice and never used them again. Um, again, you've got a battery there. You have your kinetic amplifier, which will benefit the torpedo damage again you still have your research so definitely do the research and it's gonna take you forever and i know it may seem boring but it's best to it's best to do it uh science school you can create your deflectors your science consoles your secondary deflectors for your science vessels uh your batteries again i haven't actually ranked this up at all um because all the science stuff i actually have is actually from my fleet uh so yeah to be honest i went straight to there rather than creating any of these 
Um, shields, actually doesn't come under science, it just comes under shields, but you'll have your personal shields, you'll have your space shields, you'll have your shield batteries as well, uh, which are fantastic. I use them all the time on my science vessels and it does really help uh, keep my shields up even though I actually never have an issue with my shields going down whatsoever. Science vessels are great, you should really use them. Um, officer training, it actually creates your, your training pads f that will give you this set of abilities in in your ship, whether it be space or whether it be on, on the ground. As you can see here, I have tactical uh, pads here, training manuals. Um, you'll be able to create, depending on what character you are, you'll be able to create certain types uh, or certain amounts of certain types, such as I am a tactical, so I'll be able to create more tactical uh, training manuals, and I will be science or engineering, unfortunately, but they do give you a set few that you can actually just create. Um, again, you'll really ideally want to be leveling them up. Your special projects that you have here, there are certain events coming through uh, the Star Trek Online universe, where you may may have noticed, if you've been playing for the last couple of months, uh, of the last few months or so, um, you may have noticed like the little Omega sign, as you can see at the bottom there, that little sign there, if you're not familiar with the Roman, Roman numerals, um, I say numerals, but the alphabets. Uh, this is the Omega sign, um, which in the Star Trek lore, Omega is an extremely dangerous particle, um, and that can destroy subspace for thousands of light years. Um, it can even destroy a whole, a whole quarter of the quadrant um, in the lore of Star Trek Voyager. So you will get them, and you'll have to round them out and play a little mini game, and you'll get these. Which, if I didn't just do that. Which you'll be able to create into all these different sections. You can see I am actually missing uh, the one blue Omega Trace. Um, and you'll be able to, have to fly around space. Uh, I believe some of them is in, is in Andorra. Uh, some of them are in the space station on Earth. Uh, they're everywhere. K13. Uh, they are absolutely everywhere. But you can actually create upgrade technology to actually help upgrade all your other things that you've got going on. All that here, all your console and like that, and they actually work really well. The Omega ones—they're worth—they're worth doing when you when the the event actually comes up. They're absolutely fantastic. So what I'm going to do is oh great spam, just what I needed on the chat. Um, and when I say chat, I mean the in-game chat, not my streaming chat. Um, take you into to space because I actually want to show you certain points where you can actually get uh, a lot of dilithium quite frankly. Um, the number one on getting a huge amount of dilithium is actually from lock boxes. You get dilithium uh, mining claims, VIP mining claims, which if you go hand into the dilithium or the Ferengis down at the dilithium mines, they will actually give you 5,000 dilithium. Um, or if it's on an event, you'll get 10,000. So you want to go over to here to the asteroid field here. Just come over to Lady, uh, hand a uh, hand her the, uh, the clay. Be like, okay, you like, I got this clay. Go outside, go hand over to the of the of Ferengi outside, and you'll be able to mine. It'll be a little mining mini game. I hate the mining mini game. It is a pain in the rear end. If I take you over there now, I will actually be able to show you. I you know I could speed this up. I will actually show you. What the mini game looks like it's a pain in the rear end because it's constantly changing and it's not fun quite frankly i hate it my most hated mini game in the whole star trek online franchise it's not worth it um so pop all the way over here okay go to the mining station um, you would have noticed the other one that's there as well next to it. That's actually my fleet mining station, so it's a little bit different um, where you can buy consoles from. Okay, if I take you over to here, you can practice before doing all of this. Um, you're going to need to use the analog stick to move it all around, up and down, obviously, to make it larger or wider, left and right to spin it around. And you basically just got to get the higher score as possible. The higher you get, the more dilithium you're going to get. You can see why I absolutely hate this, because as soon as you do it, it's like, oh, I've just changed size, like that. So, that's why I absolutely hate this little mini-game, um, and I'm absolutely no good at it. Um, I mean, I, st I can still get the 5,000, that's that's fine, 
but it is a pain in the derriere to actually do. As you can see, I'm constantly having to move it about. Um, so if you do get infuriated by, by it, please continue doing it. Um, I know how much of a struggle it is, um, but you you will you will get your dilithium. Don't worry about that. Um, obviously, if you do get quite a low amount, you're unfortunately not going to get the full amount. But hey, it's still better than none. See, as you can see, and it gives you a score there, and you can then collect your ore afterwards. Um, but that's basically it. Uh, you've got the lady. You've got the lady over here. Obviously, you speak. To, you can. You speak to her. You've got a lady up there. She'll actually be able to transfer different items as well. Also here, you know, environmental suits and all that. So you'll need to put your environmental suit on, and then go to the airlock over here, and then that's it. Or you can just hold down a etc. etc. What you're actually going to want to look for if you do have a VIP mining claim is actually these right here that I've highlighted here. That's what's going to give you the 5,000. You can then just do a daily... Oh, I'm so sorry. My, head, my headset absolutely cut out then. I apologise about that. Um, I need a new one. Um, if you, uh, You've got your Delifium mining claim here, but other than the 5,000, there is also another one I believe gives you 1,500, I, I believe. I could be slightly mistaken there. Um, let me just return to ship because I'm not actually going to go and do the lithium because I'm not going to embarrass myself and showing you how bad I actually do want it. Because, you know, that's not going to be fun for any of us, is it really? Let's face it. Righty oh, come on, there we are. Other things you can do. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Uh, I, am, I am looking for it. Oh, I'm absolutely blind. Battle zone. There it is. So you'll have such as the Zinkefi battle zone all the way over here. This will also give you little packs as well of delivering, which actually help quite a bit as well. But other than what, other than all of that, there are a lot of other things that you can do to actually uh, increase your delivering as well. The more characters that you have, the easier it is, because you can only. Uh, refine 8,000 Dilithium. There's a big glitch going on with the Dilithium refinery where you're actually supposed to get uh, you're actually supposed to get uh, 8,000 and then 8,000 on top for having the uh, lifetime subscription. I used to get it all the time. I used to be able to do 16,000 a day and then it's it stopped. Now and then it will pop up and it will give me 16,000 a day and then now and then it won't. And most of the time it won't. Which is an absolute big rip off considering you don't get anything with the um, with the lifetime subscription at all to be honest. It's really not worth it on the, on the console. Um, but yeah, other things you could do. There are other um, sort of missions or duty off of some missions that you can do on uh, like uh, down at the uh, academy and everything like that um, tactical officers on the space dock I believe you can do duty officers hey everybody you're all in I hope you're enjoying uh, let's take me over oh great needed more spam nah it's not spam right that's a nice shot that's a nice shot enjoy Absolutely enjoy whilst I, whilst I give you the rest of the information that I was going to give you. So, yeah, so the one that you could do is the VIP Dilithium mining claims, which is pretty easy. Again, for the Dilithium weekends, you will get an increased amount and because that's how this game works. So try and save those claims, to be honest, and then go hammer and tongs through that, through that, uh, through that weekend. Um, you can turn in contraband. Um, and again, for those who are, are newer, you may not have ever heard of it. Once a day, you may be able to do a duty officer assignment uh, or a DOF assignment um, from the security officer at a space dock where you hand in the co uh, it costs about five contraband and it will reward like 2,000 delithium, something like that. Um, you've got Academy Law, you answer a law question, that will give you roughly about 480, I believe. Um, reputations. Reputations are another great way of doing it. Um, if you have a look 
uh, all the I got a lot on here. Uh, you have a look at the reputations. You will be able to like, trade in so many marks for some delivery, and the more marks you have, the bigger the delivery package. Um, but also ranking them up through their tiers will also give you that little bit of boost as well. And when you hit the end, you get a nice little lump sum um, on the delithium. Um, so you can help, which helps you then create what you actually want to create in the reputations. Um, you then have your... not Well, you do have your duty officers there. You can have... You, you've got all your assignments over there, which can actually give you some delithium depending on what they are. Um, I don't really ever bother them, to be honest, because, again, that's me, I, I, so I don't think they're worth it, personally. Admirality, you'll have four Admirality slots just down here, which, once you rank up to level 10, will give you a nice little amount, but also, every 10 steps, because you're on the right-hand side of my screen at the top, you'll have the Tour the of Duty, which, when you get to level 10, will give you set rewards such as the Klingon and the Ferengi will give you 30,000 Dilithium ore um, for then you need to refine. Good thing about having multiple characters is that you can create all these characters and you can then refine 8,000 Dilithium a day on each of those characters and transfer it to your main character which is how a lot of people actually do it um, because it's actually one of the easiest things to do refine it on other characters, send it over use it there. Um, you can also do like red alert weekends like the Borg red alert or the Tholian red alert um, and these will give you roughly 480 to 960 roughly give or take it's only a rough, rough guide what I'm saying here um, and again more on the Dilithium weekends so that is basically the easiest way is just play the game to be honest um, stuff like your Admirality will help you a lot um, your reputations will help you a lot, doing the PVEs, doing all the battle zones, everything like that. It's, it's just going to help you out so much more. Um, but that is, I mean, that's basically it. Again, but other than having all of those, um, all of those other uh, characters to actually refine all that delithium and then just trade it onto that one. Because the easy thing to do is go onto the exchange and put, like... Uh, quite a lot of delithium down, or I can't remember. I can't fully remember, but it's an offer which nobody would go for in their right mind. Like I don't know, one delithium, f one one delithium per zen, or whatever the lowest is, like twenty, I think it is, something like that. Because um, nobody's going to go for it. Because if you have a look at the delithium exchange, which again you can also do this as well. If you buy zen, if you buy zen, and go onto the delithium exchange, you can actually sell your zen. Um, so what is, what's what's the offers up for sale at the moment? The lowest is 170 the lithium per Zen, and that's just for one Zen coin. Um, but you can do it that way, and then just put it down for like you can just sell it for like 20, uh, 20 uh, lithium for a Zen or something like that, um, and then you just quickly jump onto your other character and select it and be like, yeah, okay, now I've got all this Delithium on here as well. Um, but that is, to be honest, that is basically it, really. Um, I've gone through the point of the R&D system with you. It is to help you upgrade. Obviously, the higher rank you are, the more towards level 60 you are. You're going to be looking at actually joining a fleet, get the fleet stuff. However, you have got certain sets in your, in your R&D which will actually help your character out even at level 60 such as the weapons and having certain abilities on those weapons and um, so it's always worth doing the research on them um, because it is actually going to benefit you later on in the game so that is basically it for the R&D the delivery I've just gone through um, just play the game you'll get a truck ton anyway just doing the daily daily delivery and grinds and everything like that and it will be absolutely fine for you or if you do not want to wait just buy some Zen sell it that will give you the refined stuff. Obviously, if you're trying to sell it at like 180 Zen and the cheapest is 170, it's not going to work out too well for you. So always go one lower than what's currently on there at the moment. Unfortunately, it may seem like a little bit of a ripoff, but unfortunately, if you're that desperate, that's what you're going to have to do. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope I've been able to clear some bits up for you. Um, 
if you did enjoy it, please, you know, if you're watching on YouTube, watching on Twitch at the moment, please, you know, subscribe, leave a like on YouTube, and subscribe on YouTube as well. And I would really appreciate all the support you can actually give. So thank you very much for all your time. Um, and please check out the other videos. I've got an absolute turn on under the British Gamer guys. We've got so many videos on there that are Star Trek related as well. Plus, we've also got all the other uh, beginners guides for 2018 as well. So thanks everyone for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Bye.